time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What My Line, brought to you by Remington Rand, makers of the world's number one electric shaver, the Remington. Now, let's all play What My Line. And now, let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. On my left, it's a great pleasure to have again tonight one of the finest members of the show business profession, a great comedian, Fred Allen. Thank you. And on my left, ladies and gentlemen, a young lady who was not herself last Sunday night. She looked like Fran, Fran Allison from where I saw the show. But tonight she's back as herself, Miss Arlene Francis. Thank you, Fred. And on my left, the distinguished publisher who doesn't have quite enough opportunity to express himself on this panel, and so he's going to lecture at Town Hall on Wednesday night. <laughs> Mr. Bennett, sir. <laughs> It's Wednesday morning, as a matter of fact. All righty. Uh, on my left, our <laughs> distinguished panel moderator, the passion of every lady from Kalamazoo to New Rochelle, lovable John Charles Daly. <laughs> Thank you, Bennett. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. It's Sunday night, and we're up to our old tricks. We have some... Uh, very fine guests with some very fine and we trust difficult occupations as far as the panel is concerned. We'll also have a famous guest challenger before the panel a bit later. But right now it's time for our experts to meet the first challenger whose job has to be spotted. So would you sign in, please, sir? Hal... Hal Gold, right, sir? Firm, bold... Hal is your nickname, I guess. Right. It's just one of those names that's come into such general use. That's the only name you think of as having up yes. front there, huh? Where are you from, sir? New York City. New York City. Well, it's nice to have a neighbor with us, and there are a lot of neighbors over there who would like to get a better look at you, Sue. So would you take a hike in front of the panel? Gold, is it? That muscle real? Right. Wow. <laughs> that hand real? Wow. You're all gold, but you're not glistening, I see. <laughs> all right, Mr. Gold, if you'll come over here, please, sir, and sit down with me. At this point, the panel, as you may know, gets one free guess as to what your line may be. We'll begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. Well, we had a weightlifter recently, but uh, he looks like a weightlifter, too. Mr. Allen. I think Mr. Gold is the plumber that Professor Einstein would like to be. <laughs> Miss Mattis. I think he operates the Perry Mutual machine at Jamaica. Mr. Sir. <laughs> I think Mr. Gold lifts automobiles in either hand. Balances them like that. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. Nobody has it right. We'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Mr. Gold, and at the same time, we'll tell them what his line is. <laughs> and in this particular instance tonight, there's a further piece of information which we would like to let our viewers at home have. So let's let them have an additional piece of information which the panel will be denied. Now, Mr. Gold, I think we're all ready to go. You know how we score this here operation? Yes. Does he have two jobs? I mean, this other... No, no. questions, oh. no answers. Don't say a word. Just don't say a word. All right, Mr. Gold is salaried. Let's begin the general questioning with Miss Kilgallen. Well, Mr. Gold, uh, is there anything at all physical about your work? Yes. Uh, does your uh, splendid physique have anything to do with it? Yes. Are you I would say it helps, Dorothy, yes. <clears throat> Are you in some form of athletic or sporting work? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. Uh, is there a product involved <clears throat> in what you do? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. I could have phoned that in, couldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> do you uh, come into direct contact with people? Yes. Is that where your physique uh, comes into its own, as yes. it were? Um, uh, would you try to restrain them in any way? Sometimes. Sometimes. I just think they'd like it, Mr. Gold. <laughs> uh, uh, cut that out, Francis, would you like to do come you, over uh, here and I'll... Do 
of you, by any chance, work for a non-profit organization? Yes. Is it some arm of the law that you yes. work for? Uh, just a moment. We'll have to have a small conference, please. Oh, I thought I was doing so well. <laughs> you can't fool with the law, you know. John can't mm -hmm. convince him what he does. I would say <laughs> this, that <laughs> Mr. Gold, very generously, considering that um, in the broader concept of his labors, uh, he might have some reason to exercise authority, gave you an affirmative reply. Uh, on consideration, uh, we feel it's only fair that since you got this affirmative reply, we should now change it and make it no. Read out. <laughs> Read out and let me go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Gould, whatever you do, am I correct in assuming that you have distinguished yourself in this in some special way within the past year or so? I would say that Mr. Gold, and certainly in our term of reference, has distinguished himself in a specific way. I mean, yes. I thought this might be the special information. Has Mr. Gold won some kind of an award or a medal or some kind of a certificate for something he's done recently? Nope. nope. That's a very fine question, though. I want to congratulate you. Four <laughs> down and six to go. Miss Kilgallen. Well, Mr. Gold, do you work for a branch of a government? Yes. Is it federal? No. Five down and five to go, Mr. Allen. Is it uh, part of the city government? Yes. Do you wear a uniform? Yes. Do you, from your ruddy complexion, I would say that you spend a considerable time out of doors, is that? Mm -hmm. Well, in the considerable time, I yes. could say that... Yes. Well, he must go out to have lunch with his uniform. <laughs> <laughs> Unless he eats indoors. <laughs> Is he there... changes for lunch. Oh, I, why, and don't... Do you uh, have any uh, implements that go along with your uh, function that you perform? Yes. Is it a machine of any sort? Yes. You're not a motorcycle policeman by any... No. Time. That's six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Do you work for one of the departments uh, in New York City? Yes. Uh, is it a department that is uh, very necessary for the... Uh, cleanliness of New York City? No. No, I wouldn't think so. Seven down and it contributes, you know, everything. Certainly hope so, because I want Mr. Gold to be a good, clean, living fellow. Oh, yes, he yeah. is. <laughs> Seven down and three to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Gold might be a seaman. Do you perform your services principally on land, Mr. Yes. Gold? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I expect you to know on that. He might be a dry uh, sailor. <laughs> do you, could you have anything remotely to do with the fire department? Yes. Oh, you do. Uh, gee, you're not one of those fellows who drives the hook and ladder. I, are you a, an officer in the fire department? Yes, that's right. And I think we would have to give on that one. I think Mr. Gold will agree. And he has a rather special character because on the morning of December 15th, 1953, Lieutenant Harold I. Gold put out a fire in the home of Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. <laughs> Miss Dorothy, we, we didn't mean to be mean. We just wanted to see if you'd remember. Sorry, I didn't recognize him without his rubbers. Well, I, <laughs> I'll say this, that uh, Hal, if I may, said, you know, I'm a little bit worried about this because Miss Kilgallen may remember some correspondence, so can I write down Hal instead of Harold? And I said, anything you want, it goes. No, uh, I was so excited at the time that I'm afraid I didn't pay any attention to his curly hair. But they did a splendid job, and they got there in three seconds flat. Oh, so well, who, who set the fire? Did... Can we have a go at that? <laughs> <laughs> we have $15 more going. <laughs> no, we can't. It's a wonderful fire department, and... Uh, one of the big reasons why is because it's made They're up of men like Lieutenant Gold. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't set him. I set him, he puts him out, Fred. <laughs> oh, I see. In 15 seconds flat. Right. Sir, I hope you had as much fun as we I had having you as a guest. Thank it was you. nice to have you with us. <laughs> All right, panel. That was a kind of a tricky one. Let's see what you can do with another challenger. Would you sign in, please, ma'am? Zena? Zena Stanley, is that right?
Mexico. Where are you from, ma'am? San Antonio. San Texas. Antonio in Texas. Well, that's great. Is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Mrs. Stanley uh -huh. from San Antonio, Texas. Uh -huh. Well, over there in the panel is that old longhorn there, that Mr. Fred Allen and some Hello. three colleagues, and they'd like to get a little better look at you. Would you take a walk over there? Thank you. Hello. Hello. Have you heard anyone speak of me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, would you come over here, Mrs. Stanley, and sit down next to me, please? And uh, on the basis of this brief chance the panel has had to meet you, see your handwriting and so forth, we'll give them that free guess that they get, and we'll begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think she runs fiestas. Runs fiestas, Mr. They're Allen. very big with fiestas in San Antonio. I think that Miss Stanley is uh, president of a Gabby Hayes fan club. <laughs> Miss Francis. I think Miss Stanley is a professor of economics. Mr. Sir. I think Miss Zana Stanley founded Zanesville, Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mrs. Stanley. At the same time, we will tell them what her line is. But the panel will have to get dig for this one. And I would like to start off by saying, panel, I'm glad that you're there and I'm here, because this is a little bit tough, I'm afraid. You know how we score this one, Mrs. Stanley? Yes. All right, fine. We will then say that Mrs. Stanley is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Fred Allen. Well, I want to compliment Miss Stanley before we start. She's the only person I ever met from Texas who wasn't talking about it. Uh, you haven't had time yet. Pardon? I haven't had time to talk about it. Oh, you will. I hope you will. Well, tell me, uh, Miss Stanley, is there a product involved in what you do? Yes. There is a product mm -hmm. involved. Is this product available or is it used for both sexes? Yes. Is it, uh, is it a product uh, that I would be familiar with? <laughs> I would say that you would be familiar with it, probably. I reached an old age, you know. <laughs> But I, I think probably you have run into this product. I have run into it. Yeah. Well, is this a uh, product uh, that uh, we're involved with here, is it something that is found in the state of Texas? Yeah. Yes. <coughs> yeah, you can find it in the state found of Texas. Found elsewhere, too, I assume. Yes, sir. Can be found elsewhere. Well, is this uh, uh, stuff, whatever it is, I say stuff uh, using the word product usually, loosely rather, <laughs> Uh, is this uh, uh, responsible for the many millionaires who are in Texas? <laughs> You'll understand the burst of applause and the laughter a bit later on, but you've got a no answer. I the gusher that. from the audience. I I was on one, the wrong. one down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Is there, is, could this product be brought into the house? Yes. Would it be usually found in the house? after it became a product that you handled? No. No, it wouldn't usually. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Stanley, is this product made in San Antonio? <laughs> Can be. Can be, yes. Is it also made in other cities? Yes, sir. Is this product used about the person? Any person. You mean with specific application to the person? Or is it just used by a person? Well, no. Would it be uh, worn or carried by a person? Can it be worn or carried by a person? Yes. Yes. It can. Uh, could it be? Uh, could it be worn by a person? No. No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. But it could be carried by a person. Yes. Could I carry it? You could. Uh, would it be uh, in any way humorous if I carried it along Fifth Avenue? <laughs> I wouldn't think so, would you? I don't think it would. No, would. I don't. Mr. Allen, I think you'll agree with us that it wouldn't be humorous if you were carrying this. Four down and six to go, Mr. Allen. Could it be carried in either hand? Yes, sir. It could, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was off on the oil wells. I'm <laughs> eliminated those. Is it uh, something that uh, uh, helps people? if it's used. I think we'd better say no. I think we'd better say no. We might upset a lot of things if we said yes. Five down and five to go. You're upsetting me by just saying no. <laughs> I'm sorry, Fred. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Is this product ever used internally? 
<laughs> no, <laughs> sit down in Portugal. I'm going to give you one more minute to get this. It's a very tough one, panel, so don't feel bad if you don't get it. Miss Stanley, was this product ever alive or is it alive when no, you sir. use it? No. no. Seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is this made of more than one of the three things we always talk about, animal, vegetable, and mineral? No. That makes it eight down and two to go, Mr. Allen. I pass. <laughs> Miss Francis. Is it animal? No. no. Nine it, down and one to go, Mr. Is it mineral? No. no. Ten down and no more to go. It's wedge the bubble, and it's a fascinating occupation. Mrs. Stanley handles all the bad checks that come into the DA's oh. office. That's the fun. <laughs> and you get the full prize, and our thanks to David Goldberg. Nice to have you. No oil wells, Fred, just bad checks. Can't well, make... Texas, I associate with things. <laughs> All right, in just a moment, we'll meet tonight's mystery. ...little feature of a program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. My colleagues and friends on the panel have blindfolds, and they are all in place, are they, panel? Yes, yes sir. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? Panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we get right down to the general questioning, which we will begin tonight with uh, Bennett Sir. Well, the reception was accorded you makes me feel that your face is reasonably familiar to the public. Is that correct? <clears throat> well, sir, I just don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I would, uh, I think, say yes to that, Bennett, as an impartial arbiter here. Uh, am I correct that this is a lady who is at present talking through her nose? Well, I should hope to tell you. <laughs> is your name one that might be familiar on the pages of Variety? Well, yes. At times, I'm sorry to say so. And other times, well, it's all right, I suppose. <laughs> in other words, it appears in Variety with some degree of frequency. I guess so, uh-huh. <laughs> Would you be a familiar sight among the uh, big studios in Hollywood? Well, one particular one I'm terribly fond of, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Are you uh, also a lady who has sh shown her talents on the Broadway stage? Well, thank you for calling me a lady and for saying that I have talent, but no. That's what not a nine to go, Miss Gilgallen. Are you, then, primarily a screen star? Well, I guess you would say so, uh-huh. And uh, <laughs> you're, you're connected with a major studio? Well, yes, indeed. Uh, might you be described as a glamour girl? Well, that's mighty kind of you, I do declare. <laughs> and the answer to that, Miss Dorothy, is yes. But I rather thought from the way the audience responded that it might be. Uh, are you, uh, do you play uh, leading ladies, uh, romantic leading ladies, rather than just comedians? Oh, I just love those romantic roles. <laughs> uh, are you married? Uh-huh. I hope to tell you so. Have you any children? Well, yes, I sure do. Is your husband in the profession? Uh-huh. Yes, indeed. Um, is your husband, or has he ever been, a British subject? Well, he sure has, honey, I do declare. Uh, was he recently seen in a big 20th Century Fox Cinemascope spectacle? Yes, indeed. This is going to be awful if I pick the wrong husband, isn't it? <laughs> as long as uh, she didn't. <laughs> well, let me put it this way. Is your husband Michael Wilding? Oh, he sure is. And then you must be beautiful Elizabeth Taylor. That's right. <laughs> a wonderful performance. Miss Elizabeth, that was a wonderful performance. Well, thank you very much. It now listen to that voice reader right <laughs> down where mine is. Isn't that something? I can't even find it now. Well, it's awfully nice to have you on Once My Life. What brought you to New York? Well, uh, I came here for the premiere of the last film I was in. 
the last time I oh, saw Oh, the last time I saw I've been reading in the paper. Big premiere this week. Is the capital, huh? Yes. Well, uh, with your gracious presence, I'm sure it's got to be a big and successful picture. Thank you very much. I hope so. It's very nice. Could I ask a question? Isn't yes. that? It's the Scott Fitzgerald story, isn't it? Yes, it yeah. is. Babylon uh, it, Revisited? That's right, yeah. Why did they rename it the last time I saw Paris? Well, they thought maybe people would think it was biblical, <laughs> and it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it means Babylon Revisited. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Paris is not biblical. <laughs> last time I saw it. That is one of the things Our thanks not. to you for being a wonderful, thanks, gracious guest. <laughs> We've got uh, just about enough time to see if you can uh, nail one of these real fast. Would you sign in, please, sir? Tony Provenzan, no, right? <laughs> Tony Provenzano, and where are you from, sir? New Kensington, Pennsylvania. New Kensington, Pennsylvania. Now, we don't have too much time, so I think we'll dispense with the walk-down panel. Will you take a good look at Mr. Provenzano? It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. We'll also dispense <laughs> with the wild guesses, Mr. Provenzano. So if you'll come over and sit down next to me, we'll have that much more time for the questioning. What we will do, however, is give our folks at home a chance to get a further look at Mr. Provenzano, and at the same time, we will tell them what his line is. But the panel has got to dig. <laughs> You should know that this is a, a tricky one, and you have to work fast. We don't have too much time. Mr. Provenzano is salaried. We'll begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. I like the fact that you say this is a tricky one, as though the others were not. <laughs> is there a product connected with what you do, Mr. Provenzano? Yes. Is it something that uh, uh, we would find in the home? Yes. Would we find it on the first floor of a home? Yes. Would we find it in any particular room more than another? Yes. Would you find it in the kitchen? Yes. Could you eat this product? No. <laughs> One dollar and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Provenzano, is this product made of animal or vegetable material? No. Two down and eight to go, Ms. Kilgallen. You've had a tough time with that is one tonight. Is it then tonight, mineral? Leave that out. Yes. Would it be used more by a housewife than by her husband? Yes. Is it part of the kitchen equipment? Yes. Uh, does it ever get hot? Yes. Well, is it something like a, a stove or a broiler or something that has to do with cooking? Yes. It has. Well, I'm, I think this, if Mr. Provenzano is willing, we'll give you a qualified yes. It has something to do with cooking. On that issue and issue alone, do you get the qualified yes? Thank you. I haven't been doing very well, you know. Oh, you're doing great. Um, well. Is food put near or in or on this? No. Uh, sometimes near, huh? Yeah, we'll give you some times near. Well, I'll pass. I don't know where I'm going anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Allen. Well, what is it doing if it's... What if it's... What is it doing? He forgot to give him the five dollars. Oh, I'm sorry, Fred. You know how it is. The man tries That's to make a That's how he makes his money. I often wondered how he made the money here. <laughs> Fred, don't say that. I'm going to get a lot of letters accusing me of just that tomorrow. You know, there's a... There's a uh, what's my line in Russia going on now? What? <laughs> they have to confess right away the minute uh, they <laughs> Sponsored by a, a man who makes a detergent for brainwashing over there. <laughs> but I don't know if, if there's anything that's hot in the in the kitchen and and uh, it's not useful and and uh, it has no relationship to food. I certainly uh, he's not an inspector of pilot lights or anything like that. <laughs> no, he doesn't inspect pilot lights. That's four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Does this product ever come into contact with water? Yes. Uh, is it? Part, uh, is it always in contact with water? Yes. In use it is, yes. In use it is. Mm -hmm. Does it, uh, soften water? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I would have to say no. That's five down and five to go. We don't have time pipes? to... Huh? Anything to do with pipes? No, it hasn't got to do with pipes. We'll give the full... This was a tricky one, but I think you'd have gotten it because she was certainly on the road, although in specifics you might have had some trouble. Mr. Provenzano tests the whistles on whistling tea kettles at Alcoa Aluminum. <laughs> Does this thing test whistles? Well, we'll the
Miss Dorothy, I suppose you're going back to Cleveland in the Shepherd case. So it's once again, until next week, this is John Daly saying good night and good reporting, Miss Dorothy. <laughs> thank you, John. Good night, Fred. Uh, good, thank you, uh, Dorothy. Good night, Alma. <laughs> good night, Fred. Good night, Fran. <laughs> Testing. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, Mr. Provenzano sings whistle while Provenzano works. <laughs> good night to another whistler, John Charles Day. Good, good night, Bennett. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Line? <laughs> this has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network.